What is it? When is lunch? What's a microphone? Balanced and unbalanced. How did I get here? Never heard of it. Is there an echo in here? What's the temperature outside? Is there an amp in the What's building? What's going on? Why is it like that? Who's there? Forky asks a question. Wait a second. Wrong show. Start over. What is it? When is lunch? What's a microphone? How fast does sound travel? Why are our ears made like this? What's in a speaker? Are low frequencies really omnidirectional? What? Is a cardioid pattern? Is phantom power? What's an EQ? Mr. Sam asks a question. What is it? What is sound design? Today we're going to review just some basics. You know, some minor things with a slight theater twist. I really hope that this isn't boring. Boring! Don't worry. This won't be boring. Not even a little bit. First, I want to try just a 15 second experiment. Okay, not bad. What about number two? All right. Now during that first part, that quiet part, it was awkward, it felt really weird. Definitely not a fan of that one. The other bit, the second part, it started playing and an image almost popped instantly into my mind. Crazy, right? Here's a great definition. Let's try the process of specifying, acquiring, manipulating, or generating audio elements. Not bad, right? Mm, but I see some looks of confusion on your face. Let's try Sam's version. Either I find an amazing sound or I create it, then I slap it on a project and it becomes awesome. Now we're talking. Does sound design even affect me today? I don't carry around mics or cables, and the only speakers I use are in my car. I never touched a soundboard, and I don't carry around- Yes, it absolutely does. It's called sound spatial awareness. Of course he'd say that. He's teaching the class. Just think, when you're at home, each room has its own feel to it, its own sound to it. It also happens at school, in your car. Actually, it happens everywhere you go. Okay, well, I'll give you that. Here's something to think about. If you heard a voice recorded in a random room, could you figure it out? Just by using your ears, hearing the reflections of the room, the space of the room, could you figure it out? Test area. Welcome to Clovis Unified's Performing Arts Center. This is a living room. Test area. Welcome to Clovis Unified's Performing Arts Center. This is a small closet. Test area. Welcome to Clovis Unified's Performing Arts Center. This is a garage. Hate to say I told you so. Okay, so we get spatial awareness. That makes sense. Why do we need a system to make it loud? Picture you and your friends going to a concert. You've been listening to this group for years. You know all their songs. You spend more money than you thought for the tickets. You've posted all over social media that you're going to this concert. <laughs> yep, I've been there. Concerts are awesome. But when you get to the venue, there's a lot of commotion at the doors. You work your way up to, towards the front of the door, and the announcer on a bullhorn is saying that there's only allowing 50 people to enter. Turns out, the truck that was bringing all the gear never made it to the venue. No! So the band will be playing acoustically. Since they're playing their acoustic set, they can only play just loud enough for about 50 people to hear. No PA. Someone right on my slide. <laughs> that was me. You know, PA, public address system. Oh, public address system. Pretty smart. Uh, by the way, Professor, what is an audiophile? Oh, an audiophile are an exceptional breed of people who are fascinated by pure audio, motivated by sound quality. Are there some basic tools we can use? Yes. Let's look at a few basic tools. Name some gear? 
Uh, you know, there's microphones, um, speakers. Yes, microphones catch the sounds and the speakers reproduce the sounds. Any others? Cables? Yep, cables. Mixer boards too, yep. Is there something called an amplifier? Oh, yes, good. Also, EQs. Someone must have edited my slide again. Like right here, a computer and coffee? I added coffee to this slide. Computers are used, well, pretty much almost on during every sound design anything, whether it's for video or theater or even home studios. So, so I'm seeing a lot of basic tools. Are there any directions on how these things work or do we just wing it? <laughs> no, no, we don't wing it. That would, that would be embarrassing. But yes, there's a specific way that these tools work together. Good. Uh, would you mind showing us? Because my memory, it doesn't, it doesn't work most of the time. What does it say? Official answer? Unofficial? Did you edit my slide again? Yep. I mean, there are so many parts. I'm sure that there is something somewhere that can be switched, right? Well, you're right. Most of the time, like 99%. You mean what I wrote on the slide? Official answer, yes. Unofficial. A few parts can be swapped 99% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much most of the time. It's microphone to the mixer board, to the amps, and then finally to the speakers. Yeah, I don't get it. From the mic to the stage patch, using the snake to the input of the board, out of the board to the crossover if you have one, to the amp, out of the amp, back to the snake which feeds the speaker. So an example of unofficial would be... Oh, this is cool. Here, check this out. So, if you take an over-the-ear headphones, right? Over-the-ear headphones? And then you plug them into a mixer board, which is right here. You plug this in, then you crank up the volume. Actually, you're gonna need to crank it up a lot because the sound quality is terrible. But check this out. So when you do this, okay, so I'm gonna put the microphone over by the speaker. So as you can tell, my voice disappears, but puts over by this, but puts over by the speaker. Check this out. Microphone check. Microphone check. How cool is that? That's using over-the-ear headphones to a mixer board, to an amplifier, back to speakers. So it's not the microphone. It's a pair of headphones. Da, 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 da. Let's try the Jaws thing again. Da, 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 Sounds way better in my head. Another switch up is the amps and the crossovers. Usually the crossover feeds the signal to the amps, and sometimes it's the other way around. Humans can hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. A crossover splits the frequencies at different points, as little as one point, or as many as, well, as many as you need. But I would try not to have more than five. Five's getting a bit ridiculous. The points are set throughout the frequency spectrum, and then sends them to the designated speaker. Okay, still clear as mud? Here, let me actually wheel this around. Here, this might help out. The high frequencies, those go to the horns, those are the tops. We have the mids, those go to the drivers, which are here, and then the low frequencies, those goes to the subwoofers, which are usually down here. Is that, is that a little bit better? Okay, well, the high frequencies, those are usually like the uh, cymbals on a drum kit. 
and the mids would be like the vocals or the mid parts of what a guitar would sound like, that mid tone kind of a thing. And the lows would be usually like your kick drum or your bass guitar. The angles of the room, there's also the angle at which the speakers are mounted. You also have the temperature of the room. That affects the speed of sound, which everyone knows is 1,125 feet per second, which is, let's do that. 770 miles an hour? Ah, that sounds about right. Frequencies are great when you know how to use them, but when you don't... You're going to want to look for the EQ section on the board. This is going to be your most help for pretty much all of your frequencies, except for Grandpa Gary's hearing aids. Those, I'm afraid, you probably don't have any control. Any questions so far? Yes. Do we really need to know all of this? Yes. No. Wait, it depends on if you want to work somewhere as an audio engineer, then yes. Oh, well that makes sense. Someone played with my slide again. If you're wanting to work with the sound design in theater, or a concert hall, or w traveling with a band, or in a studio, then yeah, you would need to know how all this stuff works. Ah, microphones. Pop quiz. Who can give me a thumbs up if there's more than 10 microphones? Total, and like everywhere. Store, people's garages, people's studios, whatever. Yes. I've definitely seen more Guitar Center. Now, who can give me a thumbs down if they think there's less than 10 microphones? Still definitely more. I've seen at least 15 at the pack. Dynamic, USB, condenser, ribbon? I'm lost. It makes sense. There's only four types. Great. Only four types. Wait, but I see hundreds at the store. You're right. There's a lot at the store. But there's only four main types. Dynamic. USB, condenser, and ribbon. Can you help clear up the mud? Not a problem. Dynamics are most durable, not sensitive to high SPLs, and they don't need phantom power. USB, it has a converter so it can go straight to the computer. The condenser, it's more responsive than the dynamic type. It's great for recording, but it requires external power. Ribbon microphones are hypersensitive. They're not so good with high SPLs and they don't need phantom power. We have three bachelors today and their names are... Wait, is this right? Okay, well this is an interesting twist. Their names are all Mike. Well, their names might be the same, but their pickup patterns are vastly different. Mike number one says he likes to work in the cardioid pattern. He says it works wonders for him. However, I think sometimes he can be a little narrow-minded. Mike number two works in complete opposite directions, never in the middle. Mike number three has learned that signal can come from any direction. Amplifiers and speakers. Now this, this is where people usually get excited. An amplifier, it basically takes a little signal and makes it big. They're usually super heavy because they have a lot of components in them. The speaker, the speaker's overall, yeah, speaker has a lot of parts as you can see. This is just the front grill. But overall speakers have a ton of parts. But basically, a speaker takes an electrical signal and turns it into a sound wave. The sound waves are the air molecules in the air that pulse back and forth, and then our ear interprets those into sounds. But wait, I've heard of speakers with amps built in. Yes. Passive speaker versus active speaker? What are you talking about? A speaker's a speaker, right? Well, oh, I got it. Active speaker for active crowd, passive speaker for passive crowd. And no, the active speaker has an amp built in, the passive speaker doesn't. Don't forget the sub. Oh, right. There's also the subwoofers, which are built to produce the low end frequency spectrum, usually about 100 hertz or below. That doom, 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 
Cables, cables, cables. Yeah, I know. You've seen a lot of cables at the store. Seems like there's a ton, but I promise you that there's only a few. Actually, mostly just two, come to think of it. Yeah, only two. Um, but they help connect everything together. The most common are the quarter inch and the XLR. But here's the question. For the quarter inch, is it mono or is it stereo? Mono or stereo? Quarter inch cables. You think they're all the same, but they're not. One's mono, one's stereo. Mono means only one channel, and stereo is two channels. Usually left and right, or a fancy word would be, while we're mixing, is pan or panning. That's easy. That's not really what we're looking for. This is a stereo feel. I guess you're kind of right. However, for this video, we're talking about more with panning and volume. Wait, it's just panning and volume? That's it? Yep. Wait, did I set all this up for nothing? <laughs> yeah. Where is this buzz coming from? It's a low tone buzz, so it's either gonna be the bass guitar, the kick drum, or something's not being grounded. Hey, bass player. Hey man, what's up? Hey, can you hit the ground lift on your DI box? My what? On your DI box, there's a ground lift. Press it. Hey man, you know what he's talking about? Sorry, what was that? Tech guy said to lift the ground? How would you do that? Sounds heavy. I don't know. Oh, try turning one of your knobs. You mean like this? Okay, I got it. He doesn't have it. Hang on, coming up. The box is right over. Soundboards. Some are big, some are small, analog, digital. The great thing is they all pretty much work the same. Gain, EQ, sends, mute, fader, routing matrix, master section, main outs. Gain, EQ, sends, mute, fader, routing matrix, master section, main out. The soundboard takes in multiple audio signals. The operator then makes them pleasant to listen to, combines them into one signal, and then sends them out to the amps and speakers. But you didn't answer the question. What? What are you talking about? Big or small, analog or digital. Oh, well that's simple. How many channels do you need? What? How many people are talking or playing on set? Ah, uh, no idea. For example, for this video, I'm using one camera, one microphone. Simple. And then for the audience is one microphone and one camera. So I only need like, what, two cameras and two microphones? Or even one if I'm really tricky. But basically that means just a small single channel system. If we're running a soundboard for a band, it could be many channels. Here we have a professional grade mixer. Wow, great looking mixer. Let me show you what it is. Ho hold on, that's not the mixer we're talking about. Are you sure? Sorry. I got my lines, I got my props. I'm ready to go. We're talking about audio mixers, like, you know, a soundboard. Really? Say, why don't you come and read off the channel names? One is kick, two snare, three bass, four. Stop right there. That's the rhythm section. Four lead guitar, six guitar two, seven keys. Yep, that's the strings in the key section. Sometimes your horns follow after that. 10, 11, 13 vocals. That's right. Vocals and voices 
And then after that usually follows like the CD, the iPod, the music. Auxiliary inputs, five and six, iPod. Wow, pretty simple. Yep, simple. That way when you're helping out at another location, you should just be able to jump right on and start mixing. And that one actually could be analog or digital. But if you're running a sound for multiple bands on one stage and only have a few minutes in between each band to, you know, get off this stage and get back on, you don't have time to, like, remix everything. Well, if you use a digital board, you can recall scenes. Or you can save the settings so each band is its own scene. It makes the job way easier, way simpler, way faster. There's a lot of prep involved, but you get the picture. So, there you have it. Not bad, right? Basics. Not that hard.